right, so um, I successfully made a 10 of 10 multi-sig wallet using these 10 devices. So we've got both the cold cards, um, the Mark IV and the Q. We've got the Passport, the Tap Signer, a Ledger Nano S, a Seed Signer, a Keystone 3 Pro, a Jade, a Trezor Model 1, and a Bitbox 2. <laughs> Those are the 10 devices. Um, and then I used Sparrow Wallet to set it up. Um, so if we look at you know the, the wallet on the wallet settings on Sparrow, you'll see you know you've got uh, all the key stores um, loaded into here. And so um, you know getting these like loading the key stores in is is really no different than doing it for a single sig. So if you're familiar with, you know, the process of uh, exporting your XPUB for, you know, either of the cold cards um, or even the Passport, Seed Signer, or Jade, right? These ones use the QRs typically. And then, you know, these ones you might be a little bit more familiar with using the um, the SD cards. Um, so, you know, I just kind of went through the process of loading each of these in here. Um, for these other ones, uh, specifically the Bitbox, Trezor, and Ledger. These ones were just hardwired in, so it's a lot easier to import the key stores when they're just hardwired. Um, I think the Keystone used to QR codes. And then the tap signer, I had to recover the private key on the cold card queue and then import it that way. Um, but what I wanted to show today is now that I have this wallet and I've actually, you know, I've sent some sats to it, right? Some test net sats. This is all in test net, by the way. But now that I have this wallet set up, um, I want to get the same wallet set up on my phone so that I can actually use the tap signer, right? Because right now with um, the wallet on my computer, um, the only way that I can sign with the tap signer is if I recover it first on either of these cold cards, and then I sign with the cold card. But I want to sign specifically with the tap signer. So I want to show you how to take this wallet that we've already set up in Sparrow, import it into Nunchuck, create a transaction on Nunchuck, sign with the tap signer, and then take that partially signed Bitcoin transaction file, and then load it back into um, our computer so that we can uh, basically, um, like at that point, you know, we can sign with the rest of them. And I won't go through the process of signing with the rest of them. I just want to show you kind of like how you can do those first initial steps and how Sparrow Wallet and Nunchuck are fully interoperable, right? Down to the, like down to the part of, you can literally sign part of the transaction on your phone and then the rest of it on your computer. So, I mean, it's pretty cool that, <laughs> you know, everything's interoperable like that. So let's, let's just get started though. Um, so the first thing you're going to have to do if you want to export this wallet is you can go to, let's see, I believe it is file and then export wallet. Okay. And then here, if you go to um, output descriptor and you click on, let's see, it might be show. Yeah. Click on show. It's going to show a moving, a moving QR code. Um, you can also click save PDF. Okay. And if you save this PDF, I'll save it in my downloads folder and I'll show you what that looks like. I'll go ahead and close that. So if I open that up in the downloads. Okay. It looks like this. So it's got all of the information of this multi-sig wallet, right? All 10 XPUBs of every device, as well as this um, information in like a giant QR form, okay? So now if I take um, the Nunchuck wallet, I'll go ahead and open that on my phone, okay? And right now I have the tap signer key um, already loaded into my Nunchuck wallet, as well as just a single SIG um, tap signer wallet. So I was just doing this for some experimentation, but I want to add that 10 of 10 multi-sig wallet. I click on this plus sign here. Okay. And then I can click create new wallet. Actually, no, sorry, not create new wallet. Recover existing wallet. Okay. 
and then it gives you some options here. You can either import the file, um, you recover a hot wallet, recover from cold card, or in this case, recover via QR codes. We're going to do that one. Okay. And then we just scan this big, huge QR code. <laughs> um, okay. And then I'll give this the same name, 10, uh, 10 MS for multi-sig and then test. So we'll press continue. Okay, so if you look at this now, it's got basically every single signer that was in that 10 of 10, and then it even recognizes the PEP signer because that's one of the keys that we've already you know, imported into this wallet. So it recognizes that one as a tap signer. So anyways, yeah, so this works. It, it got the whole thing in. If I press done and I click on that, you can see it has the same balance. Right, so this is the exact same wallet. Now, if I wanted to send some of these sats, um, and I want to use you know the tap signer on the phone, if I click into this wallet, um, let's go ahead and let's see if we can just here I'll get a um, I'll just get the next receive address from ourselves. And I'll send it to, the, to to itself, right? So press send, send all, continue. I'll paste that our own address in there. Okay, create transaction. Okay, so now on Nunchuck, this transaction is created. It has you know that much of a fee, right? Um, that's how much it will cost in fees: seventeen thousand sats. On testnet, by the way, so that's like pretty. It's a pretty significant fee, and I'll dig into that in a little bit here. Um, but you can see now on Nunchuck, right? In order for you to actually broadcast this transaction, you have to sign with every single signing device, you know, that we made this wallet with. Um, and one of those is the tap signer. So I can go ahead and do that one, right? That one, um, I have the tap signer with me right here. So if I click sign and then the tap signer pin is one two three four five six and i'll just get this tap signer ready so we'll press confirm okay so now you can see the tap signer signed right and then the rest of them aren't so and then here's all the details. But anyways, if um, so now if I want to pass this file back to Sparrow, what I can do is I can uh, let's see export transaction, right? And when I click export transaction, um, it's going to give me a, a, a list of options of how to export it. I can like you know I message it to myself. I can share it with my computer directly. Um, I can even save it onto a file and then like, like onto a, an SD card file or even on, on my iCloud. And then I can, you know, transfer it to my computer that way. I'm just going to do it through iCloud and I'm going to do this, you know, off screen just so that, uh, uh, it, you know, doesn't show my name because <laughs> I think it would otherwise. Um, so I'll do it off screen and then, you know, I'll go back to Sparrow to show you what it looks like once we have the file loaded on Sparrow. Actually, you know what? No. So what I'll do instead, I'll show you how to do this actually with the QR code. So you click export transaction, okay? And then you can do export via QR or export via BBQR. So actually, let's try to do the BBQR and see if that works with Sparrow. So I'll go ahead and do that, okay? And now on Sparrow Wallet, I'll go back here on Sparrow. I'll close that down and close that. On Sparrow Wallet, if we do file, um, open transaction, and then from QR, okay, now we're just going to show this QR, Okay, it didn't like that kind of QR code. 
Um, so we'll go back and we'll try to export it with the other type of QR. Okay, so this is the regular QR. Let's try this again. So on Sparrow file, open transaction from QR. Okay. And the reason why this takes so long is because there are 10 signers, right? <laughs> so it's a, it's a big transaction. It has a lot of data associated with it. Um, so the more signers you have in your multi-sig, you know, the bigger the, the, the file is going to be for the transaction and the longer it will take to kind of pass back and forth if you're doing it through QR code. But anyways, um, if we take a look at this transaction that we just loaded into Sparrow, you'll see Right, it's got um, the uh, the amount that we're sending, and it's sending back to ourselves. Right, it's, it's it's labeling this as a consolidation just because it's sending directly back to ourselves. So that's just the assumption. And then it has the fee here, right, seventeen thousand one hundred eight sets. So this is the same exact transaction. And then you can notice here, right, one of the signatures is already applied. So we've already got the tap signer signature. So it was able to transfer the partially signed Bitcoin transaction, right? The PSBT file with the partial signature from the tap signer. And now what we would have to do if we really wanted to broadcast this is get the nine other signatures from, you know, these wallets. And then once they're all signed, then we could broadcast it and testnet would pick it up and process it. So that's it. I mean, I, you know, this is kind of, you know, I just wanted to show how that's possible, how, both Sparrow and Nunchuck are interoperable. Um, I'm not going to finish signing and broadcasting this transaction. What I'm actually going to do is <clears throat> I'm going to keep the sats in here. And um, you may have noticed this notebook uh, that I had next to the computer. This notebook has all of the seed phrases as well as the tap signer's um, private key. This is the actual private key of the tap signer. So all the seed phrases and the private key of all of our all 10 devices, as well as the um, master fingerprints and the derivation paths. Okay. So I'm going to keep these sets in here and whoever wants to try to rebuild this 10 of 10 multi-sig themselves, um, you know, go ahead and try. And if you do it correctly, you'll see those sets in there and feel free to sweep them uh, if you're the first one to get it. Okay. So I'll I'll uh, I'll put all this information in the in the notes of the video as well, um, just so it's a little bit easier to read. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So good luck to anyone who tries to do that. <laughs>